Chancellor of Mindanao State University, General Santos, uh, Dr. Ajikari Ali. We also have the Senior Research Fellow, Filipina Institute for Development Studies also, uh, Dr. Ro Roilano Briones. And of course, we have the Chairman of the Mindanao Development Authority, or MINDA, um, Secretary Emmanuel F. Pignon. Okay. So uh, before we begin with the question, let me hear some uh, opening messages from our panelists. Uh, maybe we to start with uh, Dr. Uh, Reyes, ladies first. Um, uh, with these um, new developments, uh, like the trade wars, uh, increasing globalization, uh, I think we're facing new challenges and it's very important that we're aware of these issues so that we can better prepare for them. And that's what, PIDS is trying to do with this development policy research one um, thing that is. And we hope that uh, we would be able to raise awareness of this uh, for that. Okay, so um, maybe also hear uh, a message from uh, the Senior Research Fellow, Dr. Minana State University, General Santos. <laughs> Well, on the part of the Mindanao State University, we are uh, reiterating our message of welcoming you to the university as we are very happy for this uh, symposium uh, held by the Mindanao Development Authority under the leadership of our honorable secretary and Pina. So we assume that the university being a government institution is very much supportive the program of the Mindanao Development Authority, especially for this globalization. But for this globalization, the is actually doing it now. Okay, so uh, maybe you also a message from uh, Dr. Pionis, please. So uh, PIDS finds uh, media uh, an important partner in the dissemination of its policy research. So thank you for uh, coming and uh, please uh, give us your best shot at the, the most interesting questions so that we could help spread more information rather than disinformation in this age of social media and uh, uh, trying to counteract the loss of social cohesion and trust that I uh, discussed this morning. Okay, and of course, uh, a message of course from our secretary, uh, Emmanuel Pino. I'm glad to be home. I'm ready for your questions. <laughs> okay. Okay, so uh, one question and I'll follow up. And please um, concentrate on focus your questions to the topic at hand. Okay, so maybe start the question and answer. Uh, uh, yes, uh, Ms. Yen from abs -CBN. Hi, good afternoon to our panelists. I'm Yen from abs -CBN. Well, I'll, I'm going to start with the basic question. Since September, as noted, it is the celebration of DP. RM, you would like to know what is this celebration all about and how could this celebration give impact to, to the people, to the public? It could either be Senator Pinyol or Dr. Pinyol. Ah, I'm sorry, Secretary Pinyol, I'm sorry. Or Dr. Pinyol. Okay, thank you. The Development Policy Research Month is observed every September of each year and it's intended to raise awareness about the importance of development of policy research in formulating policies and programs. So we hope that with the celebration every month, every se I'm sorry, every September, um, people will realize that it's very important that we have um, basis for um, our policies and, and programs. And each year we choose a theme. Uh, last year it was, we focused on the fourth industrial revolution and how we can harness um, the opportunities arising from it. And this year we decided to focus on the new globalization because we're seeing trade wars, we're seeing um, um, rising mistrust, there we're seeing also um, global public health issues. And so we wanted to um, bring to the public um, this issue so that government and all the other stakeholders can be better prepared for it. Uh, all of the ideas is the lead. This is a, a whole of government uh, activity. So two or three years back, I, I, you were secretary then. 
Uh, I had a different meeting in September in DA, and they had this huge streamer on the DPRM in the DA uh, main building. So this is uh, local governments, this is national government uh, activity, celebrating uh, policy research. Okay. okay, so any other input from our panel members? Okay. Uh, it is chaired by PITS, right, Dr. Spearheaded. Spearheaded. And there are also committees coming from different government agencies. Since you said that our theme for this year is new globalization, and you also stated some of the challenges nga na pinahaharap na natin, well, how could the Philippines resort towards these challenges? Paano? How could we fight this hope? Actually, there is a culminating activity this um, month. Um, there's going to be a conference focusing on this topic on September 19 um, to be held at Sofitel, where we have invited um, policy makers, we've invited speakers from both uh, within the Philippines and also from outside to share their insights in terms of how we can address these challenges and how we can take advantage of this. So for instance, um, if the trade tensions between U.S. and China um, escalate further, some firms uh, might move out of China. In fact, some firms have already moved out of China. And so there are opportunities for countries like the Philippines to offer a um, uh, uh, place for those businesses which have moved out of China. But that means that on the part of the Philippines, there would be some local action that's needed. So we would need to make our um, localities, um, the Philippines, the provinces, the city is more attractive to investors. So that's one way of doing it. And, and perhaps Roel, Dr. Briones might want to um, to share some to expand on this. Yeah. So there are uh, macro policies that we can adopt. Uh, I think trabajo has now become a sitira. So try to come up with incentives. But even beyond that, there are also uh, infrastructure investments because study after study we've been doing, not just in PIDS but in other uh, institutions, show that uh, investors are really looking for infrastructure and the government is really investing in a big way, the biggest way among all the administrations before uh, in infrastructure. As well as, so uh, infrastructure, there's also local level action. I think we're also pushing for uh, uh, the various uh, jurisdictions supported in Mindanao, say, by Minda, to be able to have their own, uh, say, industrial or even agro-industrial uh, places of investment to attract both foreign and local investors. Okay, so, any other questions? Okay, so let's proceed to the next question. Uh, yes, uh, Mr. Philip Lickhart, uh, you can use this microphone. Magandang hapo po sa lahat. Alam mo ninyo, maganda ito dahil kasi may uusapan natin ang patungkol sa kakularan ng Mindanao. Sa tunog, uh, palagi po tayo ang last priority as far as development per se is concerned. Kaya nandito na po si Chairman uh, Pinyon, uh, former secretary. Ito po yung pagkakataon yata na pwede po natin o pwede namin malaman sa inyo ano na yung mga initial at ano pa yung mga visions ninyo for Mindanao. Salamat. Actually, uh, when I assumed the office uh, last month, ang um, message ko was to go back to the basic. Uh, like, uh, say for example, uh, I was talking to uh, Dr. Uh, Reyes. How accurate are the poverty statistics for Mindanao? How accurate would be the uh, malnutrition uh, statistics, uh, yung ating production statistics. Uh, we have to go back to these basic numbers because if we do not get the correct numbers, we will not have the correct planning process. Halimbawa, sinasabi nila na ang Lanao del Sur daw ang pinakamahirap na probinsya sa buong Pilipinas. Ang tanong ko, says who? Hindi ba pag nag-determine ka ng uh, family, uh, uh, poverty level ng uh, per family, uh, kailangan face-to-face -face interview. Sino pumunta ng Lanao Del Sur? Para tanungin, 
yung mga maranaw kung ano yung bubble to level nila. So, maring hindi accurate. Second, yung pinag-usapan natin kayo ng Chancellor, no? yung uh, educational level, kasama pa dyan yung, ano, yung matrasa. Sa assessment na yan. Uh, Kinoconsider pa natin yung na, ano, na uh, gates of literacy level. Uh, maaring hindi sa nakapag-aral ng public schools, pero educated sa matrasa. How would we deal with that? Also, um, we have to go back to the basic issue of kasi ang daming magandang plano eh. Merong free port sa Tawi-Tawi, may uh, uh, Mindanao railway system. Ang ganda. Kanya lang tanong ko, sa barter trade for example, do we have the goods to barter? Hindi naman pwede kasi yung barter trade, one way affair. Na tayo tumatanggap ng produkto from the outside, wala tayong binabarter. So we really have to prepare for this. Yung Mindanao railway system, napakaganda. But what goods do we carry to where? We have to get all of these numbers. We have to go, sabi ko nga, magandang mga programa ito, but this should be built on solid foundations. Lahat ng mga gandang plano na ito, uh, yung Pikong uh, Industrial Park and so on and so forth, no? lahat ito dapat uh, lagyan natin ng paa, matibay na paa. And that starts with uh, the basic numbers, statistics, Kaya kailangan namin ng supporta ng PIDS dito because based on these accurate numbers, we'll come up with correct policies, development policies. Okay. Uh, yes, I'll give you your follow-up. Maganda po yung sagot ninyo, Secretary. I mean, Chairman. Pero ito po, ito yung nakikita namin na nagiging problema. Dahil kasi on the first place, meron na pong discrimination talaga. Na kapag sinabi mo Mindanao, mukhang negative ka agad at dating. Kaya ito nga po yung nais namin malaman. Paano natin makakounter itong mga ganitong paraan na at least eh, yung buhos ng kaunaran. Eh tuloy-tuloy na. Hindi yung sulong at ras. Sulong at ras. Why not uh, develop Mindanao? Uh, for reason that uh, we really love Mindanao. Salamat. Timing na timing kasi kahapon, nag-staff meeting kami. Ang problema actually natin sa Mindanao is more perception uh, than anything else. Uh, pag sinabing Mindanao, naku, nakakatakot doon. Sino katakutan mo? Yan ang tanong doon. <laughs> diba? Sino katakutan mo? So, yesterday, ipinagutos eh, ko sa staff ng Minda na umpisahan namin ang isang advocacy. We will start with the Bank sa Moro Region. Kasi yun yung pinaka-negative yung impression palagi. So, we will be launching a program. It's called The Beauty and Bounty of the Bangsa Moro. No? We will come up with, uh, uh, you know, uh, media materials depicting, showing uh, beautiful places in uh, Tawi-Tawi, for example. Nakakita na ba kayo ng isla na may lagoon sa gitna na blue? Ako nakita ko. Flying over, uh, over Sulu. May isang isla doon, may, 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 ano, may legs sa dipla. And you fly over it from Sambuanga to Tawi-Tawi, makikita mo. Na, na, sino sa inyo nakakita ng asik-asik falls sa ano, Alamata? Na ang waterfalls hindi nahuhulog sa taas, kundi sa gilid ng bundok, dupan mo siya tubig. Amazing. But these are hardly uh, featured no? in the national media. Uh, sinong nakakalam na maliban sa Maria Cristina Falls, ang daming waterfalls sa Alamata? Hardly. Hardly. So, itong programa natin ngayon, uh, two-pronged ito. Showing the beauty of the Bangsamoro and also at the same time, showing the bounty of uh, the Bangsamoro region. In fact, uh, we will be holding a series of marketing campaigns no? showing the products coming from the Bangsamoro. Yung mga seaweeds, yung mga produkto ng Bangsamoro mula sa uh, Lanao, for example sa handwoven na uh, favorites, uh, yung ating uh, tinagtag. You know, uh, ang daming produkto ng ano, sa, sa, did you know that sa Tawi-Tawi, for example, na uh, doon ang gagaling yung mga maliliit na pusit na, ano, na uh, ina-export natin. Sa Tawi-Tawi, pwede kang mangisda. No? 
dudusob ka lang sa dagat na gano'n, tapos ilaganong mo higling with makakawuli ka ng isda. Ito tapto ko, far out to sila. Tumpok-tumpok ang isda ang pentahan ko. By the way, I'm going there to on Monday. I'm going to pay my call on the Sultan of Sulu and uh, the governor of Tawi-Tawi. So, salamat at uh, pinanggit mo yan. Yes, uh, and our motto now is Mindanao will no longer be the back door. It will be the front door of the country. Ito, ganda na ako. Nagkaroon na ng So, topic, wala nang gira sa Mindanao. And why not depend on Mindanao? Fully. Namin, wala nang gira. Salamat po. Okay, so let us proceed to the next question from Anybody? Yes, Mr. Alhosto. Yes, sir. Uh, may problema yung mga farmers natin uh, uh, sa presyo ng kopra and uh, palay. Ano pong mga policies uh, na nakamap? Ano, ano pong mga recommendation po niya para uh, masok, ma, uh, bigyan ng sumulong uh, problema? Balikan natin yung kopra. Unahin ko yung kopra. Uh, Al, when I was Secretary of Agriculture, nalipat kasi yung PCA sa DA noong September lang. At that time, bagsak na yung presyo ng kopra. Why? Why is there a slump in the prices of copra? Because there's a glut of vegetable oil in the world market. What the mag the world market prices? But we could have done something actually. Although there are repercussions because unang unang nagrecommend ako na i patawan ng patawan sa anak tariff. Patao, wala rin. Ang unang recommendation was Meron kasi tayo 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 ng trade remedies sa agriculture Pwede sana ang patawan yung ng tariff yung pang-olain Important pang-olain Kasi yun ang buha ba dito Kasi ang problema ng Malaysia at Indonesia Which are the main producers of pang-olain Merong negative reception sa kanila sa Europe because of environmental concerns. So, nalilimit yung kanilang entry sa Europe. Dito tinatampak sa Pilipinas. Napay ko ang ating mga coconut oil. Okay? So, I wanted to impose tariff sana. Kanya lang, of course, may backlash din yan eh. Kasi ka-trading natin yung Malaysia at saka Indonesia. Baka balikan din tayo. Yan yung problema. Number two, nirecommend ko na i-implement na yung biodiesel, biofuel act. Which would increase the CME component of the biodiesel from two percent to five percent. That would have absorbed about one hundred thousand metric tons of coconut oil. Pero ang sabi ng oil industry players, tata asup presyo ng ng fuel. Ano to them? If you use bio bio fuel, actually, ahaba na mga thirty percent ang mileage mo at sa kalilinis yung angin. Hindi nakikita nyo. Number pa rin palagi na hikita yun. Anyway. Yung third, which was my last request actually, meron kasing PD na pinasa si former President Marcos in nine, shortly before he left office. It was a PD which banned the export of mature coconuts. Kasi ang dahilan nila, baka agawin daw yung genetics natin. Baka itanim at magkaroon sila ng mas malakas na coconut industry. Pero ngayon, with modern technology, You don't need that anymore. Pwede ka lang kukuha ng isang chunk ng meat ng coconut and using modern genetics, pwede ka na mag-clone. Pwede ka na mag-tissue culture. So, actually, ang tingin ko doon, ang dahilan doon, pinaproteksyonan yung mga local oil mills. So right now, may ban pa doon, pero kinausap ko na si Chief Minister Ahud Murat Ibrahim ng BARN Because we are trying to explore the extent of the autonomous powers of the barn. And I presented to him the idea na magpasa ng legislation ng barn as an autonomous region na payagan na mag-export sila ng mature coconuts. So yun ang pinakasolusyon. And I have reported this to the President when he presented Sulta Kutarat last Saturday. In fact, I told the President that Chief Minister Moran and myself have already agreed that we will do this. So, antayin lang natin yung legislation ng BARM Parliament kasi kailangan ng legislation para makapag-export. There is a huge demand for mature coconuts. And uh, ito makakatulong talaga sa mga coconut farmers natin. Number two, yung uh, 
rice tarification. Talagang bumagsak yung presyo ng palay. Kasi lahat ng trader ngayon gusto mag-import na lang kasi mas malaking kita. It's a reality that we have to face. No? Of course, may mga interventions sa gobyerno, but this is not going to be felt by the farmers right away. In fact, tingin ko nga, delayed, delayed yung interventions. Eh. Dapat taon na ito kaysa yung lifting ng, uh, no, ng uh, uh, yung liberalizing the rice industry. But just the same, you know, we cannot cry over spilled milk. Nandiyan na yan, uh, we do something about it. So ang pinaka-solusyon ko dito, i-tweak natin yung rice industry ng Mindanao. We start with uh, Mindanao first. No? We will uh, convene the rice farmers groups on September 20th about because we found a niche market for high-value premium uh, rice, premium quality rice. No? Initially, Papua New Guinea would like to buy rice from us. So, ang initial natin na isusupply doon yung mga ganda klaseng bigas, 160, 218, Dinorado, Tanner, yung malalambot sa kamababango because this could command a higher price. And if we are able to find a market for this, we could convince the farmers of Mindanao, ito na yung varieties na ito ninyo. Huwag na kayo makipagsabayan sa murang bigas from Vietnam na may pakapit na Agent Orange, no? uh, di ba? <laughs> Nakipagalas. <laughs> <laughs> konting marketing ang marketing strategy lang naman. Siraan ko rin sila ng konti, siyempre ba? Hindi mo bilhin bigas. Sige, kaya-kaya ng kaya ng bigas sa Vietnam, may agent orange yan. Dito kaya sa tanim ng Pilipino, masarap na, mabango pa. Diba? Now anyway, this will start a, a, a shift actually in uh, the rice industry of Mindanao. Because now we will start to convince the farmers to plant high high quality premium and possibly organic rice which is a niche market actually uh, ang gagamitin namin dito yung Don Bosco multi-purpose cooperative na meron ng experience in exporting uh, organic rice sila yung nagbebenta ng black rice sa healthy options no uh, sila yung nagbebenta ng uh, black rice uh, and they package it very well no? so right now ang strategy is uh, iiwanan natin yung mga Uh, high yielding pero poor eating quality rice varieties tulad ng tututo na wala nang gustong pumili ngayon na matigas daw parang pato. So doon tayo sa malalambot na bigas na may benta natin and then we will convince our farmers to move towards organic rice production which I think will 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 give them a better income. Now this is the way to to uh, you know to deal with these pro problems like this. Wala na tayong magagawa na dyan na yung batas unless they repeal it unless they amend it it's, it's the law. And uh, as a government official, all that I can do is offer options for our farmers rather than rule over uh, what has been done. Okay? Okay. Uh, any other inputs pa? Uh, yes, uh, doc, Dr. Briones. So, if magkaibang crops yun. Eh? One is a temporary crop in a, I believe, temporary problem of collapsing rice prices compared to the retail prices. Um, I think one, one aside from yung nabanggit ni the secretary on no, the chairman uh, there are also measures that NFA can can undertake Kala kasi, of course it has its own it's a government agency it doesn't make decisions like a palai trader okay so one is why not buy fresh palai because all of this collapse in palai prices they're all uh, fresh palai prices why don't they unload the stocks now and punish those who are hoarding kasi the moment you start unloading stocks and the retail price starts going down Those uh, those people who are hoarding, they'll be forced also. Because they don't want to be uh, holding on to stocks that will buy in value. So, they'll be forced to Third is, uh, uh, why don't we encourage farmer cooperatives instead of selling to those traders who are exploiting them with uh, with the very low prices of palai? Why not sell the bigas? They can do toll processing with nearby millers. So, consolidate because they can't do it. And then they get to sell to uh, retailers or even uh, direct consumers, sa mga bigas ng bayan. Uh, so let's take advantage and see what other market opportunities are out there for our farmers, rather than you know simply bewailing, as, as you said, uh, spilled milk. For the coconut, uh, although that's a short-term problem, it's symptomatic of this, uh, the fact that we are so confined to copra, so we are so uh, uh, victimized by the waxing and waning of the world price. In that town, correct, Malingasad, in Misamis Oriental. Right now, they don't really care about copra because they use the coconut sugar. 
Now, how did they how how did they have a coconut sugar? Way back in the 90s, PCA had a big program of planting this hybrid uh, coconut, the fast growing. Turns out this is a dwarf variety, kind of fast growing. This is the perfect variety for harvesting coconut sugar, rather than our traditional variety. Na akitin pa ng malangkite yung yung katastas na yung ayon nila. So, in fact, they're running out of uh, raw material uh, given the demand of their market because not a lot of coconut trees are of that variety. But then, yeah, although, okay, let's wait another 10 years. Okay, that's fine. Uh, let's do it now so that 10 years from now or 20 years from now, uh, it's the next generation na makikinaba. Remember, for instance, uh, barn, uh, the right now the per capita GDP of barn is like only 17% of the national per capita GDP. That is a very large gap. And that's gonna take, seriously speaking, you know, not just years but decades to bridge that gap. So it has to start today rather than <clears throat> 10 years from now and then it takes another 100 years to bridge that gap. Okay, so let us proceed uh, to the next uh, question from um, Martin. Yes, Martin, go ahead with your question. So, good afternoon po sa ating panelist. Uh, para po kay Chancellor, uh, ano po ba yung mga initiatives na ginagawa ng Mindanao State University uh, para po sa mga youth to be part of the globalization? And to Secretary Pignol po, uh, based on your assessment po, handa na po ba yung Mindanao for globalization? And sabay-sabay uh, po ba yung mga sectors dito? Kasi nga po, uh, yung sector po namin sa persons with disability most of the time, nakakalimutan po uh, due to uh, pagbibigay ng uh, opportunities and uh, the, to, to avail quality education. So yun po yung barriers sa amin and the uh, discrimination person. For the case of Mindanao State University, uh, of course we are an academic institution as well but as we have mentioned that our vision is to make the university as a globally competitive university in southern Philippines. Of course, this, is, this implies the uh, uh, teachings of, our, of uh, quality education to the young generations. Of course, the youth, for instance, that is to prepare them to be ready for globalization. In other words, we are expecting that you will be uh, become uh, a graduate, for instance, that will be competent to, uh, to provide quality services on the, uh, on the basis of the international standard that are well versed with information technology. But of course, uh, we are an academic institution that, is, uh, that has special mandate to help the national government for the uh, realization of peace integration as well as development of Mindanao and of impact it is part of the uh, uh, special mandate of the university to help the indigenous community in Mindanao to enhance their economic conditions so therefore we are this fortunate that we have this Mindanao Development Authority under the uh, uh, leadership of our honorable uh, secretary Pino who has to expedite the development of Mindanao. So what we can assure is that we have the universities ready to cooperate with the Mindanao Development Authority for the expediting of development in Mindanao. And so far as the uh, several colleges of the university, we have the College of Agriculture, we have the College of Fisheries and etc. that can be used in helping the Mindanao Development Authority to achieve our vision. Okay, so yung pangalawang question po. Is Mindanao ready? Yes. No. That's why we're preparing. <laughs> That's why we're holding this. No? Kasi kailangan uh, maintindihan talaga nung uh, taga Mindanao yung impact ng globalization. Kanina nga, sasalita ko dun sa forum. Sabi ko, depende sa kung paano kakahanda, kung kung paano mo laruin, yung globalization is a double-edged sword. It could hurt you, but you could also chop somebody's head. Ibig sabihin, you could gain from it, pero kung hindi ka handa, natama ka. Like, may yung price industry natin yun. Hindi handa, tinamaan. But we could turn it around. Uh, pwede natin habulin pa, 
Nah, kailangan, kailangan ano eh, medyo resource po tayo ng konti. Kailangan parang basketball ito, na kung hindi ka pwedeng mag-laya, then shoot from the three-point uh, area. Uh, you have to adjust. Thank you. Okay, so shall we have the last question na daw eh? Yes, uh, from Oliver Castro. Now, we are increasing a new globalization. Uh, this question is uh, regarding for the effective, uh, how will to be effective this uh, program. Sometimes uh, we are talking or talking about the program, but uh, we are not uh, continuous uh, this uh, program. Kuminsan na uh, mga tao ay nagda-doubt na uh, more on uh, na discussion and then latak sa mga program, but uh, wala naman tayong implementation and action for that. Uh, people are doubt. That is why we are talking for that na paano magiging credible itong ating program most especially dito sa meeting ako. Actually, yun ang pinag-usapan namin kapag sa meeting. Sabi ko, you know, lahat ng mga advocacies natin, lahat ng mga advocacies natin should be translated into something that could be felt by the people. Something that would have meaning to the lives of the people. Kasi yung advocacy natin, kung puro lang uh, sloganeering, puro lang tayo meeting-meeting na ganito, at walang uh, epekto sa buhay ng uh, pangkaraniwang mamamaya, baliwala rin yung mga Ito puro policy, sir. But this policy should affect the lives of the farmers. Say, for example, yesterday, sa sabi ko sa kanila, okay, globalization, how do we make the farmer feel that uh, is part of... Uh, all of these things that we are doing today, it must be translatable into something, something that uh, will be felt by uh, the stakeholders. I mean, uh, and uh, that could be an implementation of, uh, of a concrete program. Salamat. Huwag ako ipanagto. Gusto pa nyo mga tanong, sir, pero Okay, so we heard a lot of uh, discussion today about globalization, the process and minuses. I think we, we made the argument that if we really try to understand uh, how the mechanics of how it affects the life of mga ordinary people, there's a way that although from one end parang malaking dago, there's another way of responding and reacting. So we're, we're, we're trying to make the point that uh, engaging with the world rather than closing yourself off, there's a way of doing that. We just have to be prepared. Uh, we just have to use the best technology, the best types of institutions that we've seen in the rest of the world, try to have the similar kind of innovation in the Filipino way here. And I think that's the best way to navigate the, uh, the new globalization. <laughs> I ran out of ideas. Siguro, on, on, on behalf of PIDS, we'd like to thank, um, of course, Minda, led by um, Chairman Pinyon, and of course, MSU. Um, dahil, um, I think we, we all had an opportunity to discuss what are the risks and but more importantly, how we can prepare for this new globalization. So we're hoping that this kind of interaction, sabi nga ni Secretary Pinyon, hindi lang matitigyo dito, kundi we would be able to come up. This could just be the start of um, thinking how can we formulate policies and programs that would benefit each and everyone. So hindi ho siguro magtatapos dapat dito yung usapan tungkol sa new globalization. Yes, of course, the host venue. For my, for <laughs> me, <laughs> not, uh, actually, when it comes to developing this part of the country, it is not actually the sole responsibility of the government, but even the people to are actually involved. And we need the assistance of in every individual. What I have observed in other countries, they are part of talking about their obligation, but for the Filipinos, we are talking about our, of our rights. I have the right to keep silent. I have the right to not. No, we need to talk about all what we can help to the government or the or the important developing our country. On the other side, this might 
here about this globalization. I believe that not every aspect of globalization is ideal for the Filipino people to take it. Like, for instance, this cultural globalization. I believe that this confusion that we have encountered in this in, in this uh, modern period is part of the uh, the uh, effect of the Western civilization approach of knowing the truth and reality of things, which is not based on the guidance from religious injunction, but for cultural traditions of the Western people, which is actually uh, uh, confusing in its, you know, in its element. Because they, what I mean is that uh, they use confusion, whereby uh, doubt is limited to the epistemological thoughts of knowing the truth and reality of things. What I mean is even if they are certain that you are man, that, yeah, they are, are you a man? Or if you are lesbians, you are gay, somewhat like that. Is the marriage between person belonging to the same sex? Good. In other words, we are now living in a confusing world today. <laughs> yes, is a transgender person allowed to enter any woman's bathroom? So in other words, this. The remedy for this one is to return back to the uh, teachings of good moral the values, not of values, which is based on religious teachings. And in order to prepare our young generations to, to find out the truth and reality of things, otherwise they will be confused in approaching their life. Thank you very much. Okay, so on that note, maraming salamat po sa ating uh, panelists. So we have Dr. Celia M. Reyes, Secretary